Yay! <laughs> Welcome. RevitMQ is great and fun, we know that, uh, and we can use it for all kinds of purposes. And today I will talk about the very important role RevitMQ can play in the microservice architecture, among uh, uh, some other use cases. And after that, I hope we can discuss either in here or out there or online uh, around how you are using RevitMQ. So, I think by sharing our stories, I think we can inspire each other and even more use of RabbitMQ in the future. My name is Luisa and I'm from the CloudEMQP team. We are a hosting provider of RabbitMQ and we have been on the market since 2012, meaning that we are celebrating 10 years exactly this month. Woo! <laughs> We uh, have asked our customers, how are you using RevitMQ? And the fact is that mo most of our customers are using it in a very similar way. Uh, the use cases are not that different. RevitMQ is the backbone of their architecture. And the use cases are usually uh, not too complex to understand. It's often a critical component that rarely fails, which is also super great. Woo! <laughs> Uh, so now follows some key features of RevitMQ and use case stories to go with them. Many are using RevitMQ to allow their application to respond to requests quickly, rather than being forced to perform intensive tasks on the spot. And one example is a property listing platform uses RevitMQ. So when a real estate broker adds a new image of a pro pro property, an image scaling request is added to the queue. And, uh, 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 an image scaling service then grabs the task from the queue, scale the selected image, and makes it available on the website for the users. And using message queues enables for many images to be added at the same time by many different real estate brokers. A RevitMQ use case that I like a lot is the way we are backing up databases at CloudEMQP. We perform daily backups on thousands of databases. And this is a long uh, running task and intense process that takes time, especially for some huge databases that we have. So one request per database is published to the message queue. The queue holds on to a message until the database uh, backup service has completed the request on that specific message and has acknowledged the completed task to the queue. And the message is then, of course, removed from the queue. A majority of our clients are sending thousands of emails or even handling an email automation service. And one of our clients is Trust, and they have a platform that accelerates brand growth, growth with solutions for recruiting and engaging trusted communities. And this pr platform generates many thousands, uh, many types of emails. And when they then multiply all these ties, types by a large number of candidates and client campaigns, they get an exponential volume of emails they have to send. Trust migrated its all synchronous uh, email system to include asynchronous RevitMQ processes with temporary queues to handle this volume. And once done, they also started implementing RevitMQ in several other places in their architecture. So Trust works with a consumer uh, to process batches of requests. And with additional consumers, the number of processes uh, can quickly be increased on demand. RabbitMQ has several advantages in our application stack. It allows us to better control the load used on processing and to spread it, spread it over time. RabbitMQ has become one of the essential building blocks of our infrastructure to ensure scalability required to support our growth. Yeah, RevitMQ supports mes messaging over many messaging protocols, and it's perfect for some IoT applications. An open source robot uh, farming app called FarmBot are using tools and apps to perform tasks such as watering plants, uh, putting uh, lights on for nighttime harvest, um, 
taking photos of these veggies and uh, simply impress friends and neighbors, I guess, is the biggest reason. <laughs> but FarmBot uses physical sensors and drivers that require a bridge between the physical garden and the software layer. And the message broker is used uh, for messaging between the database, user and devices. And here RabbitMQ communicates with MQTT, among other protocols, uh, when it communicates between devices and uh, web, the web browser. RabbitMQ is used as a middleman between microservices uh, by also many of our customers. Parkster, a parking app company, broke up its software into a collection of small isolated services where each service can deploy and scale as needed and they can function uh, independently of, uh, of other services. It's very nice to focus on a specific limited part of the system instead of having to think about the entire system every time you do something new or make changes. As we grow, I think we will benefit even more from this change. Mm -hmm. And the breaking down their code base has given the software developers the freedom to choose whatever technology they like. Different application parts are, can evolve independently, be written in different languages or, and or developed by separated developer teams. As we see here, they use uh, MongoDB in one part of the architecture and MySQL in another. Uh, they are also using Java for some application and Clojure for some others. And since everyone talks about Kubernetes, I felt that I had to do that too. So yeah, they are also using Kubernetes. Uh, there we go. Uh, Frontier is also one of our cli clients known for their uh, open science platform. They aim to make scientific discoveries open for the benefit of humanity. And today, RabbitMQ plays an important role behind the scenes at that company. But when Frontier started, it was based, as many other companies uh, that we have, uh, on a monolithic architecture. We wanted to translate to a microservice architecture and have many different applications that could be developed by independent teams, which would enable us to grow. The problem was that we needed to communicate between these applications, and this is where RabbitMQ came into the picture. RabbitMQ simplifies otherwise uh, complicated routing cases, uh, and here we have an example from our own architecture. Once we have, or we have, automatically created and configured a new RabbitMQ server for our clients, we want to let other services know about this. And one of, uh, example of such a service is uh, the service that need to connect and gather server metrics such as CPU and disk space from other services. And another service uh, that subscribe to this message is um, services that gather Rabbit MQ specific data such as queue length. And here we're getting help from the topic exchange. We send a message including information about the new server to this topic exchange. And the great thing about this exchange is that a whole lot of services can subscribe to this message. So the new consumer choose to subscribe to this new server created message and nothing else needs to be adjusted uh, in the message or on the publish pub publisher side. On a beautiful day, you go out running for a long time using the Adidas running app, Runtastic, and afterwards you can look at uh, your activity on the web uh, and the data is shown in the leaderboard along with your newly achieved records among ma many other things. Rantastic has many services, uh, each performing for one uh, purpose. One service is responding for the running activity, uh, one for the leaderboard and another one for the records and routes etc. And today Rantastic is using RevMQ to communicate between its services, which decouples uh, and allows for scaling. Rantastic are also taking advantage of the flexible routing in RevMQ. A new leaderboard service can easily subscribe on a completed run session, and the service responsible for the running activity do not need to care about what the subscribing 
services are doing with this data. Uh, anyhow, the main reason I wanted to mention um, Fantastic is because they al are also using the RabbitMQ Federation plugin, uh, which is a plugin that helps uh, maintain a high availability and lower latency by spreading messages between RabbitMQ servers. And Federation can collect messages from multiple cluster to a central cluster uh, and are useful when migrating to another cluster without stopping all, uh, all the producer and consumers while doing so. We looked for an easy solution to get data from the cloud into our data center. Cloud AMQP was a perfect choice as it was really easy to set up. By using the RabbitMQ Federation feature, we were able to achieve our goal. Uh, Runtastic also has a really nice blog with some RabbitMQ information. So there you have some recommended reading. Uh, and we were also talking about the Federation plugin yesterday at the crash course and Rabbit at Re uh, about RabbitMQ. And then we realized that the pers most perfect use case that we could talk about would actually be when people are migrating from in-house to something like Cloud AMQP. Application uh, might be delayed or crash sometimes, it happens, I've heard. Another thing that uh, Parkster, the parking app company, really likes about its system today it's that, uh, is that it still can be operational even if part of the processing, uh, processing is delayed or broken. So just because one small part is uh, down doesn't mean that the rest of the system has to stop. Uh, the consumer can park, uh, park the car and get the parking confirmation ticket without knowing that the payment service in this case is down. And this uh, architecture enables a more uh, silent system. Another company, Rever, it identifies and solves issues connected to the workflow, flow mainly in manufacturing. Uh, Rever's users bring their app uh, down to the factory floor via phone, laptop or tablet. And all employees can report their observations on safety hazards, uh, maintenance is issues, quality problems or improvement ideas in real time. And Rever's whole infrastructure is, as one could guess by now, uh, built with RevTime as a base handling hundreds of thousands of messages back and forth between uh, microservices uh, as a daily basis. Audit logs, notifications, searches, information about users, reports generated in the platform, all of the intelligent insights that live in a microservice, all of it runs through RabbitMQ. Mm -hmm. And of course, most customers want their cluster to be available up and running and without failing for a long time. And RabbitMQ's durable queue type, Quorum Queues, is a replicated FIFO queue based on the Raft consensus algorithm. And it provides this high availability and data safety by connecting RabbitMQ nodes with each other. We have to have a three node cluster because this is classified as a critical system in our archi architecture. And because of certifications, we cannot have a single node in production environment. So we reduce the risk of downtime. There are RevitMQ clients for almost la any language you can think of, uh, which makes it, makes it easy to adapt for people. And here you can view uh, the spread of client libraries for our more than 10,500 servers. And this is not even all clients out there. Two final use cases uh, from me for this time. Uh, we have multiple retailers as clients. And here use uh, message queue architecture. Uh, they use a message queue architecture to scale when incoming orders rise unpredictably fast or under a certain period of time, such as Black Friday. Uh, yes. And we have some taxi and delivery firms as customers too, that among other things, constantly share real-time GPS pings through RabbitMQ. So the use of uh, message queues has, as you can see, 
been beneficial from, for multiple industries and use cases are widely varied, yet very much alike. It's clear for us that these types of use cases can be found in almost every part of society. Retail, entertainment, government, schools, financial banking, education, and so on. So I hope this presentation has given you some guidance in when to use message queues in your architecture. And uh, I'm so happy to have the opportunity to work with people like you all here, uh, software developers among others who has done a huge work with RebTemQ and around RebTemQ. And a talk like this is only possible thanks to users, users who are willing to share uh, and thereby inspire others. So I want to take, take this opportunity to thank you all for that and encourage you to keep being open and continue sharing because I think that's a really great way to build a stronger community. Uh, and I'm personally always looking for user stories, so if you want to tell me something or tell me how you're using RebTemQ, then you're free to reach out to me. I think it will be our next mission at Cloudium QP to find as many user stories as we can. Uh, and on behalf of Cloudium QP, I also want to thank the RebTemQ developers, because RebTemQ is getting better and better, and none of us would be here today if it wasn't for them. So, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.